What's going on everyone? It's a new day and we have a new leader spoiled. One that I am actually really excited about as well. It seems like uh, the leaders that have been shown recently are a little bit higher in power level on average, but I suppose it really depends on how you go about thinking about these leaders. We're getting close to the end of spoiler season, so I figure we'll drop this leader in a video. And uh, well, next time we get a new leader, I will also go ahead and go over that one. Before we get started, big thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. And also I have a TCG player link in the description down below. Be sure to use it for all your Star Wars Unlimited card needs. And let's get started with a brand new event in Pyrrhic Assault. This event, by the way, looks really good but only for specific archetypes. So three cost event in double command for this phase when each friendly unit gains, when defeated, deal two damage to an enemy unit. So I was gonna say when each friendly unit dies, deal two damage to enemy unit, but of course it's a little bit of a bigger text box than that. So essentially anytime you trade off with any unit, anytime you exploit any unit, anytime you go ahead and do anything with any of your units that causes them to be defeated, you get to deal two damage to any enemy unit. It's not limited by ground arena. It's not limited by space arena. It is just a straight up two damage blast. So here's the two different areas that I think this event really looks amazing in. The first one, I think this is the most obvious one, is going to be in exploit decks. So you play Pyrrhic Assault, maybe you wanted to exploit something out that costs four or five or six or whatever, and you're on the nice resource where you have five resources available, you play this, you exploit something out that costs six, and you sacrifice two different things to, to the exploit it out, and suddenly you have kind of crafted your own three resource open fire with Pyrrhic Assault. Um, but you also get the exploit value of keep cheap, uh, cheapening all of your exploit units. But on top of that, it also makes any other units you have on the battlefield trade off. So it could be a really big thing in one turn where you go in, you attack, you trade off a couple units. Maybe they're taking off a couple battle droid units of your own. And suddenly you have exploited for four damage. You traded off a couple units. You got another, you know, two, maybe four points of damage. And suddenly you're doing eight points of damage to random units in a single turn alongside the combat damage. The second area that I think this could be potentially pretty good in is in token deck. So you play this on, you know, turn two as, as early as turn two. And suddenly your random tokens can suddenly trade into a bunch of different units way more effectively. Of course, Using this on turn two gives you very few options on uh, what you could have played beforehand. Like you could have really only played like droid deployment, the two battle droid tokens for two resources, and now you have two three threes essentially, right? But that's not really the best case scenario in the token decks. I'm imagining more so you'd use this later on on like turn five, turn six, you got like three or four or five battle droid tokens or clone trooper tokens. Your opponent wants to deal with them. This makes it really awkward to deal with because suddenly all these battle droid tokens are three powered damage dealers because the one power from battle droid token and then the two damage from when it gets defeated. This to me seems interesting and can be powerful in those specific archetypes. I think the token idea is a little bit weaker than the exploit one because the token deck probably is looking either to use those tokens for other purposes and they don't want them to die. So you don't want to be trading them off or you're looking to use those tokens for just dealing damage to your opponent's base. So your opponent is going to have the opportunity to attack them. And that's where your opponent gets the choice whether or not Pyrrhic Assault actually ends up being pretty good for you, which is usually not a good situation. The exploit deck really, I think is where this shines because you get the discount, you get extra value from sacrificing units. Heck, you can even have attacked into their base if you wanted to. And of course you get the extra value from any other units that you have on the battlefield. I could definitely see, you know, having like a malevolence, right? Malevolence um, is exploit, is it, if I'm not mistaken, it's exploit four. Yep, it's exploit four for nine resources. Um, let me just pull up malevolence here. I'm thinking like, okay, you're playing malevolence yes i know it's in the different aspect but let's say you play pyrrhic assault for five resources just to give an example um you're playing you're paying a total of six resources you've exploited four different units you've dealt eight damage to something and you get a malevolence down maybe that's worthwhile malevolence again is not in the correct aspect so maybe like gore right if you have like a gore on the battlefield and you're or um 
in your in your hand oh wow we don't have gore in the card menu or maybe i'm spelling it wrong i i don't actually know if gore is in the card menu but um gore exploits out you get some extra bonus damage you get to go ahead and get in your ambush get your all your keywords out get the damage from uh all the exploited that you did maybe you got something there this seems kind of interesting for that type of strategy next up though we've got gorilla insurgency this one's pretty insane and i'm not really sure what deck is looking to have this card but let's read it first each player defeats a resource they control and discards two cards from their hand and you deal four damage to each ground unit it's an eight cost event in aggression <clears throat> so eight cost event is incredibly expensive it is incredibly expensive there are a couple things that can reduce the cost of events but not necessarily in the decks that you're really looking to play this i would imagine like bib fortuna for example is a card i can think of that would make this cost a little bit cheaper but i'm not seeing bib cunning villainy in the same deck i'm seeing gorilla insurgency i'm thinking but if you are playing like the more controlling deck, you don't really want to be defeating resources. The four damage to each ground unit, maybe discarding two cards from each hand might be better for you because you have a more developed hand and you, you know, I guess care about that more potentially to card filter. But even then it seems pretty bad because chances are your opponent's not going to have that many cards in hand. Or if they do, it's not going to hurt them as much as it hurts you for defeating a resource. And maybe the four damage to a ground unit doesn't even matter to those opponents because they have more expensive value plays. If you're fighting against a more aggro deck, you're never getting to eight resources and having this actually be a very impactful event. Compare this to like Super Laser Blast, for example. Another eight cost event that is frequently played. It is just massively, massively different. The area in which this seems maybe playable is like in a more aggro, maybe mid-range style of deck. But even then, you're discarding two cards from your own hand, and you're dealing four damage to each ground unit, which is probably something that you don't want to be doing anyways. So I'm thinking, okay, how do you break the synergy? Well, obviously, the most easy way to do so is by using something like a DJ to steal a resource. And uh, I should, maybe that's not the easiest way. The easiest way is to get rid of all the cards in your hand so you don't have to discard cards. Um, and then the second way is to get like a DJ going, but then that requires double cunning or like a tech DJ, so you're in heroism, aggression, cunning, which doesn't seem like a powerful combo. This to me just seems like a very odd card and I don't really see a place for it. There's not really many ways you could cheat this out anyways. Um, like, uh, oh my gosh, I forgot. The Galactic Ambition can't play events. So like there isn't like a card like that that would allow you to play an event for like way cheap um like two or three or four resources like if i could see gorilla insurgency for two three four resources maybe you have something but even if you're paying four resources for this thing and you're cheating it out you'd have to do some really crazy things to break the symmetry i just don't think the combination of these three things defeating a resource dealing four damage and discarding two cards is actually something that any deck really wants all three of that's usually not the case but I suppose maybe someone else has an idea for this card out there. Let me know in the comment section down below. Next up, we've got probably the card I am most excited about outside of the leader, and that is Roger Roger, guys. Finn is coming back. He's on the upswing. Check this event out or upgrade out. One cost upgrade in Vigilance, just Vigilance, no heroism or villainy, which is extremely relevant. When defeated, attach this upgraded to a friendly battle droid token, plus one, plus one. So pretty straightforward. And you might be thinking, oh, you need battle droid tokens. Well, there are ways to generate battle droid tokens on both sides, villainy and heroism with neutral events. And I mean, we've seen some random cards that sh in my opinion should have heroism or villainy tags and don't. But that is a big restriction with this is that you do need a battle droid token, a friendly battle droid token. But what it allows you to do is essentially give you a bunch of random extra power for one resources on all the battle droid tokens so one thing you could do with this if you're just playing like a normal exploit deck like a newt gun raid deck you could put this on a battle droid token you attack with it boom you put it on the next battle droid token you attack with it and suddenly this is a one cost upgrade that pumps all of your battle droid tokens in sequence which is really cool the other note and this is why i said finn not that i i was a little bit joking okay i don't think finn is like absurd or anything because of this card but it is a cool synergy in that this upgrade, okay, this upgrade 
is when this upgrade is defeated. Okay, so this means that you, if you ever destroy this, you get to go ahead and attach this upgrade to a friendly battle droid token. Meaning if Finn defeats this upgrade, suddenly you're getting plus one, plus one to maybe the same battle droid token or a different battle droid token, and you're getting a shield. That seems pretty cool to me. And that might be a powerful synergy um, and something that I think Roger Roger would be interesting for, but it's, it's a little bit gimmicky for sure. I think there are some cool things you could be doing with it, but I think the cool things are a little bit niche. So I don't necessarily think this card is that amazing in terms of power level. I'm just excited about it for the flavor and for what potential we do have for the little bit of synergy that we can get out of Roger Roger. And lastly, we got the brand new leader in Asajj Ventress. Love this card, by the way. We have a brand new cunning villainy. Ooh, boy, it better be good. <laughs> uh, leader. It has an action attack with a unit. If you played an event this phase, it gets plus one plus oh for this attack. Very, very interesting action. I'm thinking of things like, okay, I have a, a surprise strike or a shoot first or uh, a no good to me dead or a waylay, all sorts of really powerful events in Cunning Villainy. I think if you were in any other combination, aspect combination, this action would be a lot weaker, but because of all the powerful things that you do have in Villainy Cunning specifically, um, I think it actually does have some potential. Again, no good to me dead is the one that really shoots out for me on top of, you know, the things that you're standard playing in Cunning, shoot first and surprise strike, like I mentioned before. So this seems like you can get a decent amount of value for it, but here's where it gets really interesting. It's four to flip, already really interesting because four to flip leaders are not super common. She is a three, four. Okay. Not an absolute atrocious stat line, but not a great one. Okay. It's definitely below average Four resource three, fours. They do happen, but you usually want to be in the four resource four, four range to be like, okay, I'm happy with this. Here's where it gets interesting. It has the Force Separatist and Sith tags. So the Force tag is extremely relevant. If you're playing like aggression cunning, you're Force throwing early, early on in the game, and then it'll trigger its on attack trigger, which is on attack if you played an event this phase, it gets plus one plus oh for this attack and deals combat damage before the defender. So essentially, if you've played an event this phase, anytime during this phase, even when you try to use the action with Asajj, so before you've even flipped Asajj, suddenly she gets the shoot first ability. So she's a 4-4 four, four first striker, for those of you that play Magic the Gathering. That seems really interesting to me. Force tag, really good. Separatist, uh, separatist tag, really good as well. The cunning villainy combination seems to be a little bit more aggressive in set three and mainly focused on separatist synergy. So I think the traits here, really, really important. But there are some problems with this one. Before I talk about everything cool you could do with the on attack trigger, she does have four toughness, which means you can get killed by open fire, force choke, take down, hello there, the new hello there. There's a lot of things that can kill Asajj. But there are ways you could play around your opponent preparing for that turn, right? When you have four resources and you're playing Sabine Ren, your opponent passes, right? You, sh you do an action, you do another action, you do another action, and they're pass, pass, pass waiting for you to deploy Sabine. There's also the option to just not deploy that card, right? And just use your other resources. And if that's the case, you probably have already won out on that. And remember, if that does happen, if you played an event beforehand, she still gets the pump. So she can still attack for four. And here's where it gets interesting is like things like K2SO, things like Fighters for Freedom, things like General Grievous, Battlefield Marine, all the things you'd be playing on turn one and turn two, usually just die to Asajj Ventress and Asajj doesn't take any damage. Granted, there's some three fives that come out on turn two that you can't kill with Asajj and for her to not take damage. But there's another thing with this is if you play like a surprise strike, it's a seven powered attacker, first striker, right? So they play a child, a Childson, right? Six, six, unbeatable. You flip Asajj, you surprise strike, you've killed Childson and it's not even a problem. Not even a problem at all. You take zero damage. It's dead in one hit. Yes, you've used an event, but you traded a surprise strike and some damage from a saw uh, that you could have got another base to kill Chelson. And you could still have those two resources left over to use one of ever anything else. And you have some units, ideally, in the cunning villainy combination to attack their base with. So this does have some really interesting stuff with 
Asajj. I think that there are some options out there. And I think um, we've seen Kylo Ren be pretty good. So this idea, and this is something that uh, we've talked about a lot, um, you have to be the right deck because there are some leaders like IG that don't have enough value on their front side or backside to warrant the stat line. The other note about IG is that he deploys a turn later. And that's a huge difference, mind you, huge difference between turn four and turn five deploy when you're considering a really poor statted unit. Well, not necessarily poor statted, just easy to kill units because there's going to be a lot more things that can kill it. Again, Kylo Ren has shown up in Kylo Yellow, for example. And if you take that same shell and you run Asajj Ventress as your leader, I think you actually could have a very similar game plan and maybe be even more valuable with running a more consistent force deck, but with the Separatist tag to bonus all the Separatist synergies that you're going to have in set three. I think the Kylo deck is a perfect, Kylo Yellow specifically, is a perfect example of where Asajj might actually be fitting into the meta and actually do some good work. Not saying that it's going to be better than Kylo Yellow necessarily, because Kylo does get more damage and more guaranteed because you don't have to play an event. That's another thing that you have to consider with Asajj is not only do you need to kind of have the right deck built around her and the right situation for her and make sure you're deploying her on the right turn and everything like that, but you also need to play events to make her action and her flip side to do anything, right? If you have no events in your deck, she is just a four resource, three, four. That's it. With the force and separatist tags, which are relevant, but you don't get anything else. However, again, Cunning is likely to be playing events. You're likely to play uh, shoot first. And in, and in Asajj, she's a five, four. If you play shoot first on Asajj, uh, surprise strike is very common. That's six events already. No good to me. That is pretty common. That's a nine events. Waylay is pretty common. That's 12 events. If you split your deck, you know, 33% events, the rest units, and maybe, maybe an upgrade or two here and there, suddenly you get a really interesting option for Asajj. And don't get me started if you start to upgrade her, right? If you get like a fallen lightsaber on Asajj, suddenly she gets out of range of takedown and open fires and all that. And if you have events to back her up, then you start to go ahead and smack things for massive chunks and not take any damage on Asajj. So I do think there's some really cool stuff with Asajj, and I'm actually really impressed with her. As I said at the beginning of the video, I've been a lot more impressed with some of the leaders that they put out over the past couple of days. And these are way stronger than the ones on average that we saw for the rest of the set. The other ones that I'm looking at are like New Gunray, Wat Tambor, Count Dooku. Um, those ones that look pretty interesting to me. Anakin, Ahsoka, General Grievous. These ones to me are the exciting ones. A lot of the other ones are a little bit more mediocre. Oh, Yoda is also in that category for me. But I think Asajj could really be interesting. The biggest thing holding her back, I will say, Anything that we talked about, throw to the side because she's cutting villainy. She is in the same aspect combination as Boba Fett. And while she does have an earlier to deploy, which means that she does have kind of a niche use that might be more advantageous, she is a cutting villainy leader. And is it just better to run Boba Fett? Mm, on average, I would say absolutely. So that's one thing that's really holding her back. And I will say that's a big downside to Asajj. So just keep that in mind. But that's going to wrap up our spoilers for today. Let me know what you think about Pyrrhic Assault, guys. Is it good enough for token exploit decks? What about Guerrilla Insurgency? Is that going to ever have a place? Roger, Roger. Swarm them with Battle Droid tokens. Exploit them out or whatever you want to do and have all the Battle Droid tokens pumped up. Finn, is he back? Asaz of Entrance, are you confident that she'll be able to take a spot in the meta with Boba Fett? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you all for the next one.